Do you remember when Darth Sidious said, To cheat death is a power only one has achieved. Turns out there's actually more than one Sith who fits the bill. Sith Lords are our speciality. What if I told you there was an ancient Sith Lord who managed to stick around in the galaxy far, far away long enough to become a problem for Luke Skywalker's Jedi Academy, more than a decade after the demise of Emperor Palpatine? The bulk of this Sith Lord story is a tale found in Adam Christopher's Shadow of the Sith, in particular during a vision gifted to Luke Skywalker by the Force. This is the story of Viceroy Exum Panshard, Lord of the Sith. There was a time, millennia before the High Republic, on a planet the history hollows have long since forgotten the name of, where a Sith Lord ruled in its monarch's stead. One evening, the Viceroy was out riding an Orbach through the forested, misty hills of his world, when a meteor came crashing down from the sky. From the edge of the crater, he spied a hunk of meteoric ore. A mineral from deep space crash-landed on the surface of this primitive world. Following this discovery, the Viceroy held a banquet in his keep's great hall. He filled the space with his subjects and had performers juggling and throwing knives for the entertainment of their liege. But something wasn't right. Exum Panchard could feel it. He stood from his throne and screamed, cutting through the revelry with a shout which made all in attendance freeze with fear. He ignited his lightsaber, a crimson curved scimitar, and took the head of one of his performers. In front of his stunned audience, the Viceroy could only laugh. The Sith Lord seemed to be losing his mind. Sometime later, Exum Panchard would pay a visit to the village blacksmith to work the meteoric metal into something useful. The blacksmith placed the ore into a plasma furnace but failed to reach the temperatures required to work with the strange material. As if he had been told what to do, Exum Panchard once again ignited his saber and plunged it into the furnace. The resulting blistering heat made the metal soft as silk, entirely workable. When the blacksmith asked his lord what he would be fashioning, he found himself frozen and then suspended in mid-air. Exum Panshard slowly draped the molten ore across the anguished face of the blacksmith, answering the question while the man succumbed to his burns. It was to be the mask of Viceroy Exum Panshard, one of the most powerful Sith relics ever designed. When he was finished working the metal, he stared into his new bronze face. It had no nose, a line of rivets forming the mouth, and two angled eyes made of black cut glass. Sometime later, the Viceroy called his subjects back to the Great Hall for another banquet. His people dined in complete silence, but Exum Panshard never took a bite. He found he no longer had any appetite, not since he started wearing the mask. He began to notice that no one dare lay eyes on him, so once again the Viceroy stood. He demanded his people look upon the new face of their master, before once again igniting his red blade. The Sith Lord's appetite had been replaced with a hunger of a different kind, a bloodlust that even he wasn't sure he could satisfy. Screams rang out from the Great Hall as Exum Panshard murdered every one of his guests. But their death alone was not enough for Exum Panshard. He continued working, slashing away at every body in the Great Hall until there was nothing left but a floor covered in blood. The screams had died out from the Great Hall, but the Sith Lord still heard them clearly. Their screams had been trapped within the mask, and Exum Panshard finally understood what he had to do. In the villages and towns surrounding the Viceroy's keep, his soldiers lit fires driving people from their homes. From the gate of the keep, the Viceroy watched as his subjects were marched into giant murder engines, conveyors and churning blades designed solely to kill in vast and terrible numbers. As he stood watch, the screaming inside his mask grew louder as more souls joined the chorus. Exum Panshard could feel his power surging in the force. The more he killed, the stronger he became. Each victim's essence was added to his own. He understood that soon he would be strong enough to attempt the impossible, to transcend and death itself. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. What happened to him? The ruling Sith Lord Viceroy Exum Panshard's reign is said to have been long and terrible. And he did in fact manage to live forever. Because within the meteoric mask of Exum Panshard was the essence of all the Viceroy's victims, but also the essence of the Sith Lord himself. So what I told you was true, from a certain point of view. A certain point of view? 
before we crack on with the rest of X and Panchard's story, I've got to say with all the rich content coming out of Star Wars lately, you might be amazed at the things you'd miss when you don't slow down. That's why I started Star Wars Sublight, to look at the finer details of a galaxy far, far away. I wanted to invite you to come on out of hyperspace with me so we could overanalyze the galaxy together. So why not like this video if you're enjoying the story so far, leave a comment, tell us what you're thinking, and subscribe to the channel so we can do this more often. Alright, that's the end of my plug, back to the story. Sometime after Panshard initially met his doom, the mask would eventually fall into the hands of a Sith cultist named Kaiser, a Pantoran girl who led the Acolytes of the Beyond. When Kaiser wore the mask, the Viceroy Exum Panshard was able to inhabit Kaiser's body, promising a new life for them both once they reached the hidden Sith world of rebirth, Exegol. With both Sidious and Darth Vader out of the picture, the galaxy was overdue for a new Sith Lord. Exum Panshard's reign was set to begin anew, that is if it weren't for Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. Luke found Kaiser and offered her the chance to abandon the dark path she'd started down and join him instead. But Kaiser chose the dark side and the power of Exum Panshard. She was eventually killed during their duel and Panshard's mask was cut in two by Luke, bringing an end once and for all to the blood-soaked reign of Viceroy Exum. Panshard. Except Luke didn't destroy the Sith relic, instead choosing to keep the pieces for further study of the dark side. Given what we know now, do you think Luke was right to keep the mask or should he have destroyed it on the spot? Thank you so much for watching and remember the force will be with you, always.